Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning how to paint a red dragon. I'm using a lot of airbrush in this tutorial, but uh, you can achieve a lot of the effects and textures with dry brushing. Uh, I've covered dry brushing or over brushing in my Lord Croak video, so that might be useful. So I'm just covering the, the base color now. I gave it a few coats. It doesn't have to um, be a strong red because I want it to be a little bit dark. So that's why I undercoated it black. Uh, so I've recently been using liquid mask for a lot of things uh, and I just thought I might try it with the stand so I can mount the dragon on the stand while I airbrush uh, different parts of it. It's much easier than holding the tail or the wing while well, the wings will come off because they're magnetized. So yeah I recommend buying some liquid mask. It's very useful and it has many uses. The only problem with this brand anyway, I haven't used other brands, but this brand, it smells really bad. <laughs> so uh, yeah, don't smell it. Maybe put a peg on your nose. But it works really well and it, it, it comes off very easily. Okay, the first highlight is Inferno Red. I'm just aiming this onto the raised areas of the model, just where the light would be hitting it.
for the brightest highlight, I will use Fire Flame. Uh, you can you can add two coats to this one. Uh, it'll be brighter. Or even uh, you can dry brush white and then dry brush uh, <clears throat> the Fire Flame on top of it. Make, make And if you are dry brushing, make sure it's a very light dry brushing. It will take a while, but it will build up a gradient and have similar effect. Okay, we're getting darker now. This is crimson. You can see I'm spraying the tail. It's a slightly uh, different color than I'm using at the moment. This is the first shadow we're adding. You can actually use this. You can apply this with a brush. Uh, you can thin it down. It, it, it kind of feels like an ink when I, when I use it. Uh, so it's great for airbrushing. Uh, but I've also had success using it with a brush, with a larger brush. Uh, adding some water to it or thinner and just um, controlling my brush stroke. So to build up that contrast between the bright red uh, and the darker areas, I'm spraying this at the uh, mid-tone before we go really dark.
now for the darkest shadow i'm using chalice red i really love this paint it's similar consistency to the uh, previous paint crimson but it's much darker it applies really well uh, and it's just perfect it's really great especially for reds or even purples as you can see it's quite dramatic as well the uh, shadow and then on the outside you can see the crimson color is bleeding in to the uh, uh, sanctuary red and the fire flame and inferno red uh, so just take your time uh, it, as with a brush as well just aim for the darkest areas where shadows would be which would be under the leg uh, the thigh uh, where the tail bends the parts of the tail cause a shadow on other parts of the tail uh, it takes a bit of practice you can even hold your model up to a light and then take a photo of it and then you can see where the shadows are I use black contrast to cover the scales, uh, not all of them, just the larger ones, just to break up the red and uh, I find black really helps separate the colours. So this is my first time using Night Quest of Flesh. I uh, really liked it. Um, I think you could even go darker with this step if you really wanted a stronger contrast between the uh, highlights.
So now I use uh, the Breca Flesh color to highlight the brightest areas. So it's very similar to uh, what I did in the first steps uh, when I was painting the red. Uh, you could use that as reference. So the parts that are the that are bending, uh, the part where it bends, this this would be left darker, and the parts where it's uh, curving outwards, I would add light to that because it's catching the sunlight. Uh, now I'll just spray this onto the the belly and the fleshy air areas. Um, this can be dry brushed as well, so you don't need an airbrush for this. It's just convenience. <laughs> And when I airbrush, I, you know, it's kind of easier to make mistakes uh, at this step as well. So I needed to tidy up the, the hair and the horns with black contrast and some of the red parts. So this step was really fun. I really enjoyed like seeing this come about. So I sprayed uh, only in the inside of the wing, as you can see here. So if you dry brush in, you just dry uh, dry brush against the um, what do you call it? The lumps, the the the, the folds in the wing, uh, and make it thicker on the edges of the wing, just to make it pop. So for this part, I thinned down the Flesh Terrors Red uh, quite a lot, actually. It was probably 80% water. And I just made sure I went over the whole model while the red areas with this. I, I, I treated it like a shade. And where, wherever the um, contrast paint would pool, I would dry my brush and then just uh, absorb the ex excess wa excess water sorry I can't say that word <laughs> excess water um, and yeah I just took my time and I used the hairdryer during this just to speed up the process and then I could see like where the paint would pool again and then I would come back to it with the dry brush and soak up the excess water and yeah uh, it takes time uh, be careful uh, but it will really help fill in the, uh, the cracks and the in the scales. So you can skip this step if you want to, if you're happy with the wings. Uh, but I wanted to uh, give my wings a bit of a pinkish color. So what I did, I just like the previous step, I thinned down the um, 
flesh tear is contrast paint and just went over the wings. So using this kind of pale flesh, I tilted the uh, wing to the side and then when I airbrushed it from this angle, it, it would catch the uh, raised areas. So I'd still have the flesh terrors red uh, showing underneath and uh, of the membrane. Uh, if you're dry brushing, you'll get a similar effect as well. But when you're dry brushing, make sure you uh, get rid of a lot of the paint like you, you there's hardly any paint on your brush and just take your time building up the uh, the colors and it, it should look similar to this So I just wanted to go back to the uh, brightest areas and just make them pop and uh, give them a bit more definition. So I dry brushed uh, the brightest red color, fire flame, over the areas where the light would be touching or areas that uh, would generate some interest. So as you can see the ribs and the muscles on the arms and the, uh, the, the top of the thigh. Uh, these are great areas. Also on the knuckles of the uh, claws uh, at the top of the tail and especially on the head here like where the corners are of the nose. There you go. So this is how it would look here. So it's much sharper and the contrast between the uh, brightest areas and the darkest areas is more prominent. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. I'm thinking to do other tutorials uh, related to these dragons, like a purple dragon, uh, a kind of pink colored dragon, a white dragon, because uh, I brought a few of them for my army. Let us know if you're interested. And also, if you like what you're seeing, uh, give us a like and uh, subscribe. And hope to see you soon. Thank you.